everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Deborah Taylor from United for Children right here in St. Louis. And I also serve uh, as co-chair of the Missouri After School Network Public Policy Committee. Yes. I'm stumbling over that. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, well, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the um, agenda. And um, so, Mark, if you'll go ahead and advance there, we're going to kind of um, just break things out this year. Um, we want to do first kind of an overview of Lights On. Um, not sure where everyone's um, knowledge is at, at what is Lights On. Is this the first time? Did someone tell you, get on this webinar, learn everything you need to know? Um, and so hopefully by the end, you will have the tools and resources so that you feel more confident moving forward with your event. Um, we do want to make sure that everybody um, knows that this is the 20th anniversary for Lights On After School. And so we're going to be striving to do a few different things this year. Um, so we're going to do an overview of what the event is um, and then some tools and resources. Then we'll hear some stories um, from the field and then finally have a Q&A and any additional ideas from you guys. So let's just jump right into what is Lights On After School. Um, Lights On After School is a... Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, is an annual celebration um, that just really focuses on telling the message of after school and allowing after school programs to showcase their youth, their families, and engage community partners. Um, it is across the country. This year, the official date is on October 24th, but as you'll hear from both myself and Deborah, um, those dates didn't work with our programs were the events that we wanted to have. So October 24th for us is an all day parent teacher conference um, and we don't have programming on that day. So not an ideal to day to showcase necessarily. So we're gonna be doing our event on October the 11th, but then we'll still be um, posting some pictures and still trying to engage and really build up the hype for that October 24th um, date. It is a time to bring in policymakers and community leaders um, to engage media. Um, and really, we just want to display the really great things that are happening in our programs. Um, and just really, it's a, just a time to really highlight those things. So what does it look like across the country? If you want to go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so there's all kinds of different things you could do. On the left there is the Empire State Building. Um, and um, it is lit up for after school. They've done that for the last few years. Um, you can do things like, if you can't see that slide um, on the top and then I'll just to the right of the Empire State Building, that is a bunch of little people holding up signs in the big shape of a light bulb. And so um, whatever it is that you decide to do, you can have a rally, you could have students, you know, march through the streets, um, depending on where you're at. There's lots of different things oh, yeah. that we can do for, for lights on. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, it's really what is it that you want to highlight about your program. So how do we get started? We're going to kind of go through um, the planning of the event, and then we'll kind of come back and give you some other ideas on other things we can do. And then we also definitely want to hear from um, others that are on the call today as well. Um, so there's some big things that we need to kind of look at. Who are we going to invite? Um, really, think about what kind of thing we want to do. Come on, this one now. How we're going to involve um, leaders and the media to just to have a bigger impact because that's a big part of what it is. We do family nights, we do family engagement events. Lights On is a little bit more um, special because this is just really a time to really tell that story to a broader audience. And then what all do you need to do to really just pull off that event? Um, so first I think you have to decide who is it you want to reach. We definitely want to um, highlight our youth in different ways and sometimes even if you don't have youth at the event, that's who we're talking about, right? That's why we do what we do every afternoon, every early morning, um, all of those kind of things. It's really about the kids, right? Um, but we also want to engage those parents. And sometimes with the lights on, it's in a different way. We might be um, helping them to realize different parts of uh, roles they could play within our program um, or doing some different things like that. This is also a time when um, we want to highlight to school administrators or to our boards of education, maybe to regular day teachers. Um, this is a time when they can come and see um, some great things that your program does and really highlight um, some of the different activities that you guys might do. Might be a regular night of programming and you just really want to highlight that. It really depends on who it is you're talking to. I kind of mentioned earlier that we want to include um, some policymakers. We're going to talk a little bit more about those, um, who all that could be at the local, the state, the federal level. And that really depends on your community um, and your the school that you serve or the program that you're serving. Um, we're also going to highlight community partners and the media a little bit more. Um, Deborah or, or um, 
Mark, did we, did I miss anything else or we're going to come back and talk about those other people? Anybody else you guys want to add at this time? Nope. I think we're going to, we, we will keep move on with on. it. You're doing Perfect. Okay. And again, anytime you guys have a question, um, you can type that into that group chat and, um, or raise your, tell them, say, I want to ask a question if it's lengthy and Terry will unmute you. So just a reminder that that chat box is there. Okay, so moving on, once you once we figure out what is it we want to do, is it do we want to have um, our parents and our youth there for a family night? Is it some sort of a um, community celebration? Do we really want to have um, students display things or perform? I was at a um, lights on a couple years ago at down in Jennings High School, and they had their choir perform. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. That was one part of their evening, um, but it was something that that was a part of their after school program. Do you have guest speakers or a panel that wants to talk about, do you have parents that are gonna share their story and the importance of your after school program? Um, is it a ceremony or a recognition? Um, this past school year, we received a grant from our um, Miller County Health Department. And so part of our lights on is gonna be inviting back some dignitaries, our school board, our um, superintendent and having a ribbon cutting ceremony for our Mustang orchard and you'll see a picture here in a minute of the kiddos that they learn how to plant trees and take care of those trees and we actually had a few uh very few but a few peaches this year on one of the trees and so we're going to be looking at that and doing a ribbon cutting ceremony for our outdoor classroom um, that's something that the press would want to come and see and so there's different things that we can do um, whenever we think about those things, then you can think about lots of different ideas. These are some pictures from um, Patrick from last year from the Boys and Girls Club of the Ozarks. Um, and so sometimes they've had just entertainment. This was one of their, um, the guy with a guitar over there was one that they had and they did a thing, hooks, hunters, and hillbillies. And I, um, it, was, it was something that again, spoke to their community at that local school and that local program. Um, and so they had just a fun night there. So it could be an open house. You could have some different kinds of entertainment. Sometimes lights on are great opportunities to engage um, people in your community where kids can see them in a different um, way. And so um, these are a couple of pictures of police department or fire department, um, which lights on a lot of times this can be a really great time for um, students to interact, to families to interact with the police department in a positive way. Um, and that may not be the way that they see Police. I know there are students in our program that they don't really like our SRO because there were negative connotations with the police um, that they've had in, a, in the past. And so that's something that we've tried to do with past Lights On events is just to give them, um, hey, these are just the guys that we play basketball with, or these are the guys that we had um, that fall festival with, and they were the ones that set up our pumpkin bowling, whatever it may be. It's just a better way, easier way to get them involved. It might also be something with um, fitness. Um, this time we're also going to have a, a walk. So we're going to encourage our families to come and they're going to get prizes for every lap that they do around, um, around the event. And so maybe it's something with fitness um, and some different partners. It can also be a fall festival. And so here's again, some pictures of different things that it, what relates to um, your group of kiddos and what is it that you want to focus on um, is it could be a clown with balloon animals. It could be a bounce house or it could be, um, you know, a family decorating a pumpkin and having a, a family pumpkin contest. Um, there's all different things that you could do kind of in this avenue um, or in this vein that just is, is just fall fun that, that you could have for your um, lights on. So once you've decided on really what is that event, there's a few things that we wanna make sure that you do. The first thing is registering for your event um, with the After School Alliance. We're gonna show you that link in just a minute. Um, we do want you to think about who can help you do this. This is not an individual task. This is not something for a site coordinator to do by themselves. It's not something for the director to put on, um, but really should be something that you, you have the ability. Maybe there's a local hospital or clinic in your area that really has some information and they've just been looking for a way to get that information out to parents or to families and they would love to be a partner um, and, and set up a booth there. Think about who else could you use sponsor or partners in your um, local community to help make your event a success. Um, again, we do want to invite those policymakers and other community leaders. Sometimes that can be um, a little bit daunting or a little bit intimidating because you may think, well, we're just going to be having a fall festival. We're not having some big to do. There's no uh, formal time that we're going to have a presentation and I don't know would that be something that a you know a policymaker would want to see the whole point
point of um, the lights on, a big part of it is that you're providing a safe and positive place for these kids to be after school. And so it's really important that policy people can also see that. Um, and then you get to explain other things that you do. Homework help by itself is not some super exciting thing, but it's a huge part of what a lot of our programs do. Um, and so this is a this is an event kind of place that every policymaker, every community leader, um, in the end, like it is a great thing for them to be there and everybody, most all of those people, want their picture taken with cute little kids, right? And you're definitely gonna give them some of those or you're gonna provide them with some educational experiences that are going to help them um, just do their job better. And in the end, you're a constituent and you are a voter or the, the parents that are gonna be coming to that event, because like in my case, my um, actual representative is not um, the same representative for the school district in which I work. And so I engage both of those people um, because we do want, they do, they should want to for sure. And most of them, most all of them do want to hear from those people. Um, and then again, we're gonna definitely invite the media and we wanna make sure that we make that enticing something that, that is gonna be noteworthy. Um, something that's going to be newsworthy, excuse me. So the first thing we said again is to register for your lights on event. Um, we definitely want to hear um, from the After School Alliance that Missouri is just knocked it out of the park this year, that we've had all kinds of um, programs sign up. And so I'm talking to myself here because I've not gone on and registered again. I'm going to do it right after this right after this call we're going to get on and get those things done it's just a few questions um the link is right there and we'll also make sure that link goes out um later today or is on it's recorded here but really just if you put in after school alliance and type in lights on into google this is what's going to come up and so you create an account um, and you have that it's going to ask you a few questions about what it is you're doing so please 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 make sure you register your event um, partners and sponsorships and again, there's kind of those things. Are there other organizations that are just going to help make that event a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more informative? Is there something that you can um, that you could get in there to help those people? Do you need um, sponsors to help you pull off some aspect of the event? You know, one of the things we really want to do is is we want to provide T-shirts for our students. Um, we're 21st century, and so that's not it's not a safety feature. It's just something we want to do to help build um, school pride and really celebrate the event. Um, and so we look for some sponsors to help us um, cover that cost. That's something, and then they're gonna be there to help um, kind of spread that message as well. So that's something that you just wanna make sure. When we're thinking about those local sponsors and partnerships, um, Deborah had a good idea about delivering um, to local people. So Deborah, I'll let you kind of share that idea with them. Is Deborah muted? Whoops. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm, I need to back up. Okay, there I am. All right, so uh, we were talking about sponsorships and partnerships. Right, and I think- Collaborating. Right, and we were talking about if there's um, local people, what was one of the things you had a, the program did to um, make that personal touch? Um, well, some of the things that they're doing, and I'm gonna talk about a specific lights on that we were doing in addition to just some general things that we were uh, talking about and that the programs do. Uh, many of the personal touches include the children, either creating invitations or actually going and visiting um, some of the partners or people in their community. I have one of our programs where the older person lives two doors down from the school. So that's a very easy reach, a very uh, safe reach for the children to go out and make those types of contacts with. But in terms of additional sponsors, uh, they come through either contacts or getting information from parents, uh, people that we've gone out and done other business with, because you never know how people can be connected and we are advocating that you ask uh, because there are things that we need. We lose nothing if people tell us no, but we have so much to gain if we go out and just ask people for specific things that we need. Colleen. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And I think that is something that we just wanted to highlight um, that those personal touches do make a difference. Um, the other thing we're going to say on this um, next slide about involving policymakers and another way you can really make it a personal touch is that very, um, the second to last bullet point there on always saying thank you. Um, that is something that I know we've seen in some of our 
um, state representatives offices are those thank you cards back from our kiddos um, that when they wrote thank you for coming to our lights on event thank you for doing um, speaking with us you know sometimes they're kind of humorous um, but those thank yous really do go a long way and so we just want to continue to say make sure we do that often and those personal touches are are really key um, so when we're talking about involving policymakers and other leaders you really have to decide what is their role um, are you inviting them to have um, just to show up are you inviting them for a photo opportunity or are they going to have an active part in the celebration and some of the time um, that's very helpful to let them know exactly what it is that they're doing um, excuse me if they're going to be in an active part like on a panel or that sort of thing you want to to help prepare them so you may want to send them information about your program or about the questions that you may be asking them. If they're just there to attend, then it's also letting them know this is what the schedule looks like because a lot of our policymakers are um, very busy, but it is also something of this is why you should attend this event. This is going to be, and when you can say there's going to be media there or there's going to be the opportunity to meet with constituents, um, with families, those kind of things, that is always helpful in helping them to, um, to come to those events. Um, it's also sometimes important, for example, with our event, it's going to be during our entire after school time, but I'm asking them to be there at 430 because that's when we want to do the ribbon cutting and they'll still have time to see some of that. Um, but I don't want them there when we're doing transition or that kind of thing because it's a little chaotic sometimes, right? And so those are the pieces of just thinking through that of not just saying drop in at three because are you really going to have something for them to do at three o'clock? If you are, perfectly fine, but just thinking about every time, um, any time that they're there, how are you gonna involve those people? Um, I know that there's times that we have proclamations and resolutions, um, inviting your mayor to come and read that proclamation. Um, some of the time that can be really beneficial, that can be very helpful. Um, we wanna send that invitation and then make sure to follow up with a phone call or an email. Um, you may email an invitation, but then it's always great just to send a, a call and to see if they're going to be there um, so that you're ready for them. I also like to have, if I have somebody at a check-in table, that sort of thing, I, if it's gonna be a state representative or someone that I wanna make sure they know, um, I wanna know if our state senator comes, I'm gonna print off his little picture from the um, website and say, if this guy comes, this is who he is, um, please don't just greet him like a parent. We wanna make sure that um, we know who those people are and that they're, um, that they're greeted and they're put into, the, in, into a place where we want them to be, basically. Um, the other thing that we think about is who could these policymakers be? Um, they can be county commissioners, perhaps. Maybe that's the most appropriate people. They can be city managers, mayors, we said, um, state representatives and senators. They can be city council people. Um, they might be, um, maybe it's your congressman. Maybe you can get a congressman or your congresswoman to, to attend the event. Um, if not, it's always still good just to invite um, even that regional staff. staff. And so um, they typically have, the senators have about six offices across the state. Um, most represent, or most um, House of Representative congressmen have a office, um, at least two or three offices somewhere in their district. And so invite those federal staffers because a lot of the time they're the people that are going to then bring that message to um, those federal people as well. Um, you also just want to make sure that you provide staff with an opportunity to know who those policymakers are. And so, um, like I said, in, in my situation, my um, personal, the person I vote for is not necessarily my, um, the person that is in our district for our, our school district and for our after school program. So there at the bottom, um, there is a lookup. You can just type in Missouri uh, legislator lookup and it asks you for your five digit zip code plus the four um, specific number. Um, so the, the nine digit zip code, and it'll tell you exactly who your state representative, state senator are. Um, and then one more time, not to not to beat a dead horse, but we can never say um, thank you enough for these people coming. And so it is really important um, to make sure that we say, um, you know, who are those people? I don't know that we said school superintendents and um, school board members. So every year um, we have new school board members. I always want to make sure that they really see all that our program has to offer, not just the one thing they might see from the newsletter or for the from the um, board report, but I always wanna send those people as well. And then again, always say thank you, thank you, thank you. Make it a point to make sure that we thank them. Um, if we're gonna have all of these incredible leaders and policymakers there, we want the event covered. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mark to talk about connecting with the media. Hey, thanks Colleen. I think I'll start the video. I don't know that I necessarily need to be on video, but um, one of the things that we discovered about um, 
in terms of when we did events, lights on, other types of events, is looking at what's the best way to get the word out and let people know. And obviously you wanna make a list of, you know, what is it in our community that's the best way or what are those avenues? And you can look at, um, obviously promoting through social media is a big part of that, but then looking at the other forms of um, traditional media, whether it's television, newspaper, and radio. And I would say, go for all of them, but really zero in on, like I know that in, in our community, we have two newspapers, but we have one in particular that is a free newspaper that almost, I mean, is like the most popular thing. And people get ticked if they don't get their free newspaper three times a week. It's kind of crazy. Um, but um, anyway, the other thing that we have that I think is something that often gets uh, overlooked is radio. And so what we discovered in our community when I was um, directing um, Tiger Academy and Hollister in the Branson community was that we had an opportunity that, that they would offer a nonprofit rate for to do a radio remote. So what we did is we put together a package where we would go to the morning drive. They had a couple of uh, mornings a week. They would do, they would invite um, nonprofits and other special event coordinators in to promote uh, events in the community. And so we would go on an early morning, they call it a breakfast club. And we would do uh, hit those stations out of that family of stations and promote our event prior to the event. And then um, they would offer us a two hour radio remote. So they would come, we would get one of the local radio personalities to come be on site. And then during that two hour time period of our event, they would do like, you know, they would do three or four um, check-ins live from the event. And then that gave us a chance to have um, policymakers who were supportive of our program. Typically we would grab our mayor or city manager, um, kind of commissioner, someone like that, that uh, could be interviewed. We would have a school uh, administrator interviewed. We'd have a parent, staffer, student. Um, so we would, that would give us a chance to then promote the various things that are going on in the program. And so for two hours um, in an, on that main, you know, on that station, then we were getting some huge exposure to the program with that. Also with that comes, um, you get so many 30 second spots. And so we had one of our students, I had a fifth grade little girl, um, took her into the, into the studio and she cut the spot. She did great. And so her voice was promoting our program for the week prior to the event. And so those are just, um, and you know, you just kind of coordinate. And then after the event, the other, the big part is you want to promote it to, you know, have people show up, but then after the event, make sure you do a follow-up and provide pictures. And if you will do that and, and provide the, the press release and the pictures, and if you're, if you have a communications director within your CBO or your um, school district, make sure you, you know, you know, work with that person to make sure it's formatted correctly. They're willing to get that information out as well. So that's the way in which, um, you know, and then also never forget to contact, um, the television station. You never know. If it's a slow, you know, typically you, you would, we hope or we think our events the most important, <laughs> but typically, um, you know, you got to get on their calendar ahead of time and then, uh, and then understand that if something pops up that's of immediacy, they're going to probably push you to the side and go do that. But just develop that relationship with them so that, so they understand what's happening in, in, uh, in your, in your community and with your program. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. I was trying to get on and, and register my event to just show you how fast it was going to be for you to get on and do your lights on. I need about 25 more seconds and, and I'll have that done. So it shouldn't take anybody's day uh, too terribly long to, to make sure we get on and register our event with um, with the uh, After School Alliance. So we want to make sure that we do that. Mark, if you want to go ahead and go to the um, next page there with social media. Um, the other last thing I'm going to say with uh, connecting with the media, though, even if you don't have media that shows up, if you don't have someone, um, it would be incredible. One of the things that we found that's been very beneficial with our newspapers is even if they don't get to come and cover the event, if we send them um, pictures and a couple of kid reporter articles, they're very, um, they're a whole lot more likely to send those things in um, than maybe if I wrote up a press release. I, I will usually send a press release along with it that just told who was there, what we did, that kind of thing. But then I also want to use those youth voices. Um, and so we might have someone, some of the time we have a journalism club, some of the time we just ask some of our usually upper elementary, so fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, if someone would want to be a reporter and they're in charge of taking some photos for us as well. Um, and they get a little hat or a badge that says um, media 
you know, and that makes them feel pretty important that afternoon as well. And then they write up some of the things that they saw from their viewpoint. Um, and that is something that can sometimes get it into a newspaper that it may or may not um, otherwise have gotten in there because it was a youth report encouraging that, um, that career. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you do is you do want to, you will do want to have a presence on social media. Um, and so thinking about, um, this is another kind of area of knowing your audience and what is it that you, who is it you use? Um, Facebook and Twitter are pretty popular, but maybe your group really uses and your community uses Instagram. And that's the way that your, um, the school or your program really uses. Whatever it is that you're using, just, um, just do it. That's what we for sure want to do. Um, so with Facebook, we also want to connect that into a broader audience. So please tag the Missouri After School Network, um, the After School Alliance, and the NAA, the National After School Association. Um, and you can find those um, just by typing into your message, you know, at those things. You can also connect through hashtags. Um, on Twitter, we're going to have the Mo After School or Mo After School for All. Um, and then we want to use um, hashtag lights on after school, hashtag Mo Lights On is specific. Um, another way that we've really used um, social media in the past are the light bulbs that you see there. And so um, following this call, we'll, we'll be sending out in the next day or so, a um, these light bulbs that you have, it, it's part of our social media tips. And so there's the light bulb, I support hashtag Mo Lights On, um, and, and then we're gonna tweet it at him. And so what I do is I say, okay, Mr. Davis, our superintendent of schools, I say, can you please um, put on here, why do you support um, after school, you know, why is this important to our district? And then I will have him take a picture and put it on there, or sometimes he needs a little more encouragement. And so I will take the picture um, of him with the light bulb and then um, tweet at him from our, from our leap handle, from our after school handle. And so those are some things that, um, so we'll be doing that. And yes, summer, we will definitely be sending out um, those hashtags. The next thing, if we look at the next slide, sometimes it's hard to know, like, what should I write? What should I say? And so a part of that social media, um, it's part of that social media tips and along. So the first page will be the light bulb that you can print out. You can have kids decorate them. You can have kids do it. Um, another thing that we'll do at our event is we'll have um, parents and kids together holding up their light bulbs and try to highlight some of those of why it's important for them. Um, and then we also always want to tweet at or put on Facebook um, at those elected officials. And so we're connected with with those. And so I'll tweet at our state rep, um, uh, Representative Wood, to make sure that he sees some of those things too. So even if he wasn't at the event, um, they can also see that. And that can be really impactful. I know there's been different times that um, that I've gone to the Capitol or I've met someone and um, one in particular was, a, he was a representative from Columbia and then he became their state senator. And whenever we met him, um, he's like, do I know you from somewhere? And I said, I don't know that we've ever met in person, but um, I tweet at you a lot. I said, you have different things on there. And so, and then he was like, oh, okay. So he knew me from Twitter, even though he didn't really know me, um, but that can be very beneficial. And so some of the time we just need some ideas on what is it that we're gonna say and what do we want to, um, what do we really want to say in those? And so um, on the next slide, we're going to see, so here's some sample tweets and some sample posts. And then on the next slide, you're going to see some cover photos you can use. Um, and so updating the cover photo for your own page, for your programs page to really highlight lights on. Um, we can also like announcing your event, you want to do those things um, ahead of time. We can also put on things like we're celebrating hashtag lights on after school on October 24th. Um, along with programs across the nation, join us in highlighting the power of after school, hashtag Mo Lights On. Um, another sample tweet says, hashtag after school works to keep youth safe, help working families, and inspire learning outside the classroom. Um, on that, um, Terry's putting in there for us the hashtags that you might use, and then at after school and at um, after school for all. And again, those will be shared in um, a document that's going to follow this call that'll go out to everyone, not just those on the call, but that has social media, some tips, and it has some sample tweets, some sample posts. And so you see a couple of the banners that are the national after school, um, and then in using that, the little light up on any of those things. And then um, you may be thinking, okay, this all sounds great, but I am not going to remember all of these things. So on this next slide, we're going to see where we find um, tools and resources. And so the After School Alliance has um, on this page that is specifically LOA, stands for Lights On After School. Um, it is like a, it's a checklist, it's a planning timeline. Um, they used to call it a toolkit, but it actually has like, if you don't need everything, you can go on and say, I need to find a sample invitation to a policymaker. And you can find that on that site. 
or you can say, I need to find ideas. And then it has all kinds of different events with the ideas and some of these things there. Lots of downloadable materials. Um, and then again, to get the Missouri After School Network on Facebook, um, it's Mo uh, Asin one and then Mo at, uh, underscore After School on Twitter. And then the Mo After School Works campaign also has its own after school um, has its own social media, its own Facebook page. And so just a couple more ways um, to find those. And we'll have, again, those will all come out to you on, from our um, social media tips. Um, so now it's kind of one of those things, this might all sound uh, well and good, but like a lot of work and you're like, well, should I do it or should I not? Um, we really want you to do it. And so we, we're going to share a couple of things. I'm going to turn it over to Deborah to kind of talk about what's planned on Lights On After School and some of it, you're going to see some things maybe they've done in the past. So again, just trying to generate ideas. Um, and so be thinking about those questions. So after we share this, we'll, we'll be having some opportunity to um, answer your questions because that's really the point. So Deborah, take it away. All right. Well, in St. Louis, very obviously, there are a myriad of programs. So there's going to be a ton of activities that are happening in the programs on the actual lights on day, October 24th. But there will also be some, uh, you know, if, if a program, as Colleen mentioned, if that day doesn't work, they may have it on another day. Uh, let me this screen that you're looking at talks about the Active Learning Institute Fall 2019. We are going to celebrate lights on during active learning. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background about lights on, which, excuse me, Active Learning Institute. We started in 2011, and we actually have a planning committee, which includes United for Children, St. Louis Public Schools, Jennings School District, Lights, um, STEAM in program, Clayton Kids Zone, and Provident. Um, and there have been various other organizations and, and agencies that have come in and out, but that's our core group right now. Um, so historically, we have had an active learning institute. We've done it sometimes in the spring, sometimes in the fall. This year, we made the decision that with this being the 20th anniversary of lights on it was only fitting that we have it during the lights on week so that saturday october 26th uh, is when the active learning institute will take place at gateway middle school during um, active learning we are going to have a round table policy maker engagement event and so the way our day is set up for active learning, it goes from 8.30 to 4. So there are five sessions that take place. And our event for Lights On is going to take a piece out of the middle section. So we're gonna have, uh, at the beginning around 11 o'clock, we're gonna have our policy makers. We're just gonna have some uh, networking that goes on. And then we, that's gonna lead into a round table discussion that's going to have uh, some of our school age program leaders, our site managers, some frontline staff, as well as our local policy makers. And so we want to have just a really good exchange of information um, demonstrating what after school is, what lights on is, and how we can better support one another, how our policymakers can better support us in the work that we do. Uh, following that, we're going to have a lunch and an award ceremony. And this year, we're looking to celebrate and honor our superintendents because they have been kind of like some unsung heroes. We know that they're always there, but we're specifically looking at St. Louis Public Schools, uh, Jennings, the Ferguson Florist, St. U City, Normandy, and Clayton superintendents. So we want to honor and recognize them during that time. And we're hopeful of having a keynote speaker from the Council for Strong America to do a 15 or 20 minute speech or talk during lunch. Um, and what you're looking at now are some of the pictures from one of the past round tables. So 2000. 17, I believe, was our first year of doing this. And we received a lot of support from the Missouri After School Network. So we were just really, really excited that 
they were able to support us and help bringing out policymakers to our program. So on that particular day, um, we did a, an event, a presentation, but then the policymakers were able to go into the after school program during lights on and do a site visit. This year with this being on a Saturday, there will not be a site visit that will be a part of the event, but we thought it was really, really critical and significant that our policymakers, that our community partners, that our stakeholders understood that the staff that work in our programs or professionally developed, that they receive training, that it's, and not just on that one day, but it's an ongoing professional development where they're learning strategies and um, activities and things that they can go and do immediately in our programs with our children. We also wanted them to have the understanding that um, after school programs correlate directly with you know, workforce development as well as college preparedness. All those things are key elements of our after school program. So when you talk, so when you're looking at or when they're seeing an activity that's going, oh, this is a STEM activity, you know, potentially preparing someone for a STEM career or to further their studies in STEM or in science or any of those um, components. But additionally, it also strengthens, strengthens them academically to prepare them for college as well. So I think we wanna go to the next slide. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about the tips for collaboration. Um, we have a phenomenal committee. The Active Learning Planning Committee uh, is really, really phenomenal. Uh, so we are up and we're running and we're going, but for those of you who are at a site, it's, it, you know, we're what, five weeks out, it's still a great opportunity for you to create a committee, committee, and it does not have to be a committee of many, you know, but if you got three or four good people that are going to come in and assist you with that, go with that. And thinking of who needs to be at the table, some of programs or in a new school or there may be a new um, principal in that building or there just may be the need to uh, very intentionally create some good relationships within those buildings this is an excellent opportunity to ask them to either be a part of the planning committee for this event or to assign someone who could support you in the work that you do so when we talk about many voices without being cluttered you want to bring those people in. It could be parents, and you know, because sometimes we have parents that come and pick up the children, and you can kind of sort of tell when, as you're developing those relationships that they may be open to doing something. You know, sometimes it'll be an ongoing relationship and commitment, and sometimes it's just a one-time event. Um, but how can that person assist, and what role can they play in in you know, pulling together your event. And you want to be real specific in creating your timeline, who's going to do what and when. But at the same time, don't, don't allow yourself to get bogged down. It's a fun event. Um, involve your children, involve your parents, and involve, you know, other people in the planning as well as the day of. So I want to talk a little bit, and I'm going to hop back to our event as far as who are invitees, we're, uh, as I mentioned, inviting superintendents, uh, school administrators, school board. We're inviting state and federal elected officials, uh, our state representatives, um, and also our local elected officials in both the city and the county. Um, all of our grantees, our 21st century SAC programs, our community-based, faith-based organization um, will participate in that day. And we also are looking to have parents of children in, in our program. Not a lot, but we want to have that voice represented as well. And so when we look at a timeline, and, and this is just us, and I'll share that with you, um, this week we're looking at finalizing our invitee list, making sure those things go out. Uh, we're going to do some e-invitations as well as possibly seeing if we can get some hand-delivered 
and then we're going to follow up with phone calls. So that can be something that your volunteers can do. Just who is it that's going to do those things? After that, we're going to continue with our follow up and getting our confirmations, uh, reminders, logistics. If you're, you know, if there's food that needs to be accounted for, those type things. So we're going to make sure that we are um, having those roles assigned, but also just making sure that everything is done and continually staying in communication because invariably things are gonna come up. So what are the things that we're forgetting and just kind of going forward uh, from there? So we wanna divide the work. We don't want everything falling on one person's shoulder, but um, it's an opportunity for us to look at, you know, what are our strengths and what do each of us bring to the table and let us go forth and, and, and plan, plan the day. All right, so I think, oh, and finally, very, very important, because Colleen has mentioned this, but I want to continue saying this also, follow up. Okay, so once your event is over, it's not over. You want to thank your participants, your attendees the day of, but also follow up with uh, an email, um, a card, something uh, from the children, get those lights on light bulbs, send some information, but you want to continue to follow up because hopefully what you've also done is create a lasting relationship. We don't just want to um, see our representatives or our elected officials that one day in our program. We want to allow them to come in on a regular consistent basis because that's how they're going to gain knowledge of what we're doing and be a, be a lot more supportive. So the follow-up is, you know, they, the saying, the fortune is in the follow-up. So what is it that we want? Think about the things that you want and need for your program and, and just making sure that people know that, ask for those things. Thank you. Perfect, thank you, Deborah. And, um, and that is so very true that everything that we need to do, um, it's not just one person. It's going to be a better a better uh, event if we collaborate with lots of people. And so I'm just going to share um, kind of quickly what our lights on for Eldon looks like. Um, and I think pictures always speak pretty well. And so we'll go ahead and go to that next slide. Um, I kind of had mentioned earlier. So last year we received a grant from our Miller County Health Department. And part of what we did with that is um, is that we planted fruit trees and so we have a garden club and they do um, raised beds and then we wanted to start our mustang orchard because um, mustangs are our group and so this is the you see a picture there kind of in the middle bottom of the kiddos last fall putting the trees in um, and so we're going to have a ribbon cutting um, for this ceremony and get to recognize some of those students that helped with that and the current garden club and so our miller county um, the director is going to be there and I think a couple of his other officials, our superintendent is going to come um, and we're going to do the whole thing with a big ribbon and a big um, scissor cut. Um, and then we also have AmeriCorps on there. AmeriCorps are one of our key partners and so they help us in all kinds of ways, um, tutoring and academics and we, so we want to highlight them as well um, that afternoon. The other things that are going to be taking place in a way to get some youth leadership um, and youth voice involved with it is that our um, middle school students are actually going to come to the elementary site. So we share a parking lot on our elementary sites and then kind of behind those trees you see that open grassy area and so the middle school students are actually um, some of it designing, some of it just deciding um, what are their, they're going to each run a little booth of fun games for um, our students to participate in, so our elementary students to participate in those, and so that's going to actually kick off the afternoon, um, and we're inviting parents to come at any point in time, and then at 4.30, we're going to actually have the um, ribbon cutting and have some of those speakers. Um, we also have an after school alliance um, youth ambassador that is from our school and so she's going to share some of what she learned um, during the summer and in, in our trip to Washington DC and then also kind of tell her story about how impactful after school is for her. And so we're inviting, um, we're actually going to invite the lieutenant governor because he is a part of our he was our state senator, and so we're hoping he's going to come. He may come, he may not. He might send a staffer. Uh, we'll invite our local congressman, who is um, our congressman is actually he's he lives not far from our program, so we're going to invite him, and then our state um, officials as well as um, our school board members because we want to make sure they're there. We're also hoping to engage um, 
our two local hospitals um, that have clinics in town to also um, be there to help present just some other information on um, especially opioid um, prevention and then um, just letting our our families know the services that they provide because one of the clinics has made a a um, significant investment in their in the clinic that's there in our town and um, I actually met her at a meeting not too long ago and she said, I just don't think people know. And so they need an avenue. And so again, it's a win-win for them to be there to share what it is that they have to offer. Um, on the lower side, we also have a little um, picture there of people running. I don't think it'll look exactly that way. I didn't find any, any. I have past, past photos, but um, we used to do a huge um, bubble and glow as like a standalone event. And so some of our teachers said, um, you know, people ask for that and they really want to do those things. And so part of it's going to be, um, as the evening um, ends up is going to be a, just a time where they can do laps around our, we have a, a track kind of there um, set up. So they'll be doing that. And then the final thing um, for that night is um, it's an important part of our um, school community. So you see our school logo there at the, in the bottom right is um, together we rise family school community. Um, and some of the time we don't always think about, especially some of our um, less fortunate families or lower um, social economic status families that they don't have money to come to um, necessarily sporting events and that kind of thing. And so a big deal in our community on Friday nights is to be at the football game. Um, and so, like I said earlier, we are going to provide our kiddos with a maroon and gold shirt. This year it's going to say um, our kids are moving mountains and it has our some of our sponsors on the back um, that have helped us in that. And then they'll be recognized at the um, football game. And then as a part of that, usually there's about 500 to 700 people there. Then they also read a public service announcement about what is Lights On, what is the 21st um, Century Community Learning Center, which we are funded by, um, and then what is our local LEAP program, and if they want to get involved in it, um, how do they do that? And so it's a little blip after our um, marching band, but it means a lot to the kids. Um, and then we also teach the kids a couple of our Mustang cheers, and so they lead the crowd in the cheers as the team comes back on uh, but it's just a kind of a great way to end our night um, with lights on. And so um, we want to make sure that we, that there's all different things there. Um, I'm still working on the 20th anniversary part because part of our challenge with the 20th anniversary is that we want to try to light up 20 uh, Missouri landmarks. And so Deborah's working on the, the, the arch in St. Louis. Um, I, we're working on Jesse Hall in um, Columbia. Um, we've sent in some information and some asks um, for the um, Capitol in Jeff City to be lit up. And so that's something else that if you have um, a courthouse or you have um, some other ideas of landmarks that you could get lit up, share that with us um, so that we can get pictures of those. Um, so we can really light up um, Missouri and the, on that celebrating that 20th anniversary. Um, as we end up tonight, I just want to make sure that one more time we're just thinking about that planning. Um, and really, we've heard, we've all heard that quote or heard that saying that if you don't plan to succeed, then you plan to fail. The worst thing that can happen is that you put together, you put in a lot of time and a lot of hard work, and then nobody shows up because we failed to do one thing. We forgot to send out invitations or we forgot uh, or we didn't proofread and we had the wrong date on there, which um, those kind of things happen to all of us. Um, so again, just wanted to highlight that we have resources available. Um, one of the things that we try to use um, on this next slide is the sample planning template that just kind of breaks down whose responsibility is it? Do we have approval? Um, who's going to help support those things? And then who is going to inform? Who needs to know about it? Um, so do you need to talk to a maintenance person about getting the school open? Do we need to have signs up to show where parking goes? Um, just a lot of those kind of things to help us just make sure that um, all your hard work pays off and you have an incredible event that lots of people know about. Um, so I think at this time then, um, Mark and Deborah, I'm going to make sure and open it up to you, but what questions do you guys have? Or do you have other examples or ideas to share or anything that you'd run over, want to run by us um, as we have a few minutes left on the call? You can use the chat box or you can um, give a shout out in that check box and we'll um, unmute whoever we need to. While we're getting some questions uh, to come real quick, uh, I want to reiterate what um, Colleen said with, with what we're trying to do with 20 with the 20th anniversary. So kind of a 20 for 20, if we can get, we'd love to get 20 landmarks of some kind around the state to coincide with other landmarks around the country um, that will be lit up on that day. Also 20 proclamations. And we talked about having proclamations and there on that After School Alliance website is our sample proclamations. I, I use that and I uh, 
asked for the governor to do his proclamation again this year. So um, those are ways that anything we can provide to folks to make the to make it a little easier on their behalf, then let's do that so we have those resources. But if we can get 20 proclamations and hopefully 20 landmarks, that'd be awesome. So those of you who are in front of the computer can unmute yourselves also um, by kind of clicking on the um, button on the bottom left if you have a question. Um, there's a kind of a toggle for mute and unmute. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to type into the chat box. And in addition to questions, if there's anybody who wants to share something they've done in the past um, to help also in, encourage the brainstorming of ideas, we're, you're welcome to share that too. One of the other things I was gonna add to um, earlier when Colleen was sharing is when you're talking about making that invite, any kind of personal touch is, is key. So if you can go hand deliver invitations and is, I mean, again, we have great stuff going on, but I would go to our city council a month in advance and give them the invitation and, um, and, and personally invite each council member, hand them a, an invitation uh, also to our county commissioners. So just anything you can do on a personal level makes it a lot, um, it just gives that personal touch for people to, to not forget that there's an event going on. Hey, we have a comment down in the chat box um, from Erica that they are going to do a STEM challenge and have families light a light bulb, the light bulb battery experiment. They're going to combine our schools that get together for full days. Great idea. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I like the light bulb theme. That's awesome. And <laughs> Uh, and just so you know, in the time we were on this, um, when I wasn't speaking, which wasn't very often, um, but it was, that's how fast you can get registered. So make sure you go to After School Alliance, Lights On After School, and get those ideas out there. Um, we, we love to see um, a number of events show up there for, for our state. And that's just awesome to do. And as you, and as you do your event, um, we would love to get any of your pictures. Um, so next year's webinar, we'll have pictures of this year's events on it. Right. And also just the opportunity. And if you get a landmark lit up, we want to be able to share that also uh, nationally with the uh, school Alliance and, and the various folks around the country. Okay. Well, it looks like we're right at 11 o'clock also. Um, so that's perfect timing. Oh, we, we do have another comment. Um, PBH after school programs want to combine all 10 of their sites for a collaborative lights on event to take place in a park or space where they would have a themed event. However, time escaped us putting it together, the logistics, but this is their goal for next year. That sounds like you have a planning committee also. If you have 10, mm -hmm. sounds like 10 facilitators on that planning committee. <laughs> And then we've got another one from Crystal that um, they're thinking about having stories around the bonfire. Um, they're going to talk, uh, um, have stories and talk about after school safety. Um, uh, just wanted to confirm how the thank you card notes from the kids is so appreciated to the participants. Um, yes, that's, I mean, same with um, Mark was just mentioning the invitation. Um, invitations that are from kids and um, also go a long way. Um, and another comment that, oh, <laughs> you'll use your staff. Um, Tyler, an easy go to is to also tying in Halloween. Um, one year they did a costume party monster mash and had different stations led by staff, um, including a, phone, a photo booth and giving away awesome pictures for the programs um, and then posting for lights on. Great ideas. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something about even if you can't get the whole um, group together for the park, you know, are there things that can still be done at that site? Because, you know, um, you, don't, you know, what can we do this year? You know, what can we do? And I think it's great to have that planning committee and start thinking about um, ahead of time, what do we do next? Um, and so that sometimes happens over the summer for lights on and can be kind of, um, um, hard if not all your staff is there during the summer if you're full-time 
um, but just what people are at a park, but um, to do some sort of event that you can call um, your lights on. Even if it, even if you don't invite a ton of people, maybe it's just having, you know, a school board member, maybe it's having your site principal come. Maybe they haven't, maybe the principal of that, um, of those kiddos don't really know what it is that you do. Maybe it's just having them come and observe. Um, and that's what you can have happen today. So don't right. get caught up and it has to be this great big, huge thing. Sometimes we start small, we start small and we move forward from there. So anything that you can do is great. I think that sounds like an incredible event for next year, but don't give up on this year. We still have time um, to get those things accomplished. Okay. But we really appreciate everybody being on the call today. One more thing. Uh, Colleen mentioned that they they weren't going to be able to do um, lights on, on the day that they have on the actual day because of parent teacher conferences, schools and, you know, communities do parent teacher conferences differently. I know of a program that they actually came in and stepped into the gap because their parent teacher conferences, they had half day. And so, they want to take advantage of parents. So they still had programming going on. They want to take advantage of the fact that parents would be coming to the school. So you could maybe coordinate with the school to do your lights on event to pr provide some activities for those families who are coming for the parent teacher conferences and then make that something that also highlights your program. So there's lots of different ways that you can collaborate and, um, and make those things happen. Right, but also just make it work for you. Make it work for your program and your children, you know, and, and make it fit between the hours that are going to be, give you uh, the most participation um, and just make it most manageable. Absolutely. We would also love to have anybody come to committee meetings, uh, totally different oh, subjects. Yes, yes. We'll always give a plug out for that because um, we do, we always need voices and, and that helps to just spread our story. So I think we are out of time, um, but we want to make sure that if there's any final things, you can get ahead, a, a touch, get, you can get in touch with any of us um, and our information's on that final slide, Mark, if you want to pull that up for us. And then, um, and you can always contact Terry and she can get in touch with us as well. And then just a final reminder to look for that email, use those um, light bulbs, um, get people to give shout outs and on what they appreciate about after school, what they love about after school and, um, and, and get those things on social media um, just to help us tell that story. And the next committee meetings are gonna be on October 10th at Stony Creek in Columbia and everyone is invited um, to come Please to this. Come. Please come and then be looking in your inboxes for those tips on social media with all of the hashtags and some sample tweets and Facebook posts so that you can do. Add the pictures of your kiddos. It's just going to be, um, it's going to be a great lights on. So go get them. <laughs> Thanks gang. Thanks for joining us. Right. Have a all great right. day. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. And the countdown. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. Bye, Deborah. Have a Bye. great day. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> you guys did great.